exploiting XXE to retrieve data using a local DTD. So when would you want to use something like this? Well, let's see. Let's say you have an application that accepts XML. You know it does. You're able to declare entities and you're getting no errors, but you're not able to retrieve data in band because there's no reflection of your injected input and you're not able to retrieve data out of band because any calls to your out of band server get shut down by the egress filters. So this is where you want to try something like referencing a local DTD and then repurposing an existing entity within that local DTD to see if you could trigger an error and retrieve that data. So let's go ahead and give that a try. So we have the lab here. We'll go ahead and check stock and that sends that post parameter or that post request that contains our XML object. When we send this, everything's looking good. If we try to inject something into product ID that is non-existent, it doesn't return the contents of what we injected in product ID. So in-band exfiltration is a no-go. And we're just going to assume that out-of-band exfiltration is a no-go as well too. So what we'll do is I'll, we'll go ahead and declare our entity and doc type here. And we're going to make this a parameter entity here. And so when we give it Etsy password, we see the application responds with an error because of an XML parsing error. Okay. But what happens if we give it a file that does not, it does not exist. So we have a non-existent file and it returns with a different error. So no such file or directory. So what we need to do is we need to reference a DTD file that we know exists. And so how do you know? Well, go secure has an awesome list. Go secure actually has, actually has a pretty good walkthrough that we're going to be following. And they have an awesome list of different types of DTD files that are expected and enumerated that they've already um, compiled the list for us. So what we'll do is we'll grab this list, copy it to clipboard. We'll throw this to intruder. And we're going to add positions around this file here. So that's going to be where our intruder payloads are going to go. Paste the list. We're going to turn off URL encoding so it doesn't URL encode our forward slashes or periods or anything and start attack. So we're going to let this run and I'll be right back. Okay, so that ran. And what we could do is we could filter on status code. So when we have a status code of 200, we could see that these are actual local DTDs that exist on the server. So in this case, we have font config forward slash fonts, docbook x.dtd. So I know the lab calls for using docbook x.dtd, but we're going to get a little crafty and we're going to use font x instead. So what you could do is once you enumerate a list of valid DTDs, you can look online to see if you can find any published payloads that show how you can override existing entities and exfiltrate data. So luckily, GoSecure actually has a proof of concept using fonts.dtd. So what we can do is we can actually copy this entity declaration. So local DTD is going to stay the same, but instead of local DTD, we're going to just call it gar because that's already how we have it referenced here. So we have the local DTD described here. So we'll call that gar. And what this is going to do, this actually overwrites the EXPR entity defined here. So you can see the EXPR entity, which is an entity that already exists in fonts.dtd, as you can see up here, is actually being overwritten by everything in these single quotes. Since we can't reference an external DTD that we control, we can instead overwrite an entity from a local DTD for error-based data exfiltration. But first, we need to change the file entity to the file that we want to read, so Etsy password. And then on line 19, we have the entity error, which points to the non-existent resource ABC XYZ forward slash the contents of Etsy password. So the application should return an error saying no such file or directory ABC XYZ forward slash the contents of Etsy password, like we see right here. So that was cool. This is a really cool instance of where, OK, you can have confirmed XXE, but you're not able to retrieve data. Using this local DT DTD repurpose is really useful in cases like this, where you have really strong egress, no reflection of any type of injected input, and it still lets you get what you need at the end of the day. Well, that's all I got for this video. If you want any more from me, you can check me out on twitch.tv forward slash gar underscore seven. Every Monday and Thursday, I do educational live streams and giveaways, so I'd love to see you there. If you learned something from this video, or if you have any feedback at all, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. But other than that, hope to see you next time. Thanks again.